um, from the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, it's Special Agent Kelly Aldrich. And from Ortham, we have uh, the President, Dr. David Middleman. And we also have a member from the Federal Bureau of Investigations who is here. So a couple of housekeeping items. Make sure your cell phones are silenced. Just so everybody knows, your suspect's first appearance is tomorrow at 10 a.m. It is a virtual appearance at the jail. You can set up in the lobby and film from the television at the jail. When we get to the question and answer session, please raise your hand, tell us your name, and give us what media outlet you represent, okay? So your two minutes has started now. All right, and just moments from now, we are expecting to hear from Forsyth County officials who just yesterday we brought to you on our Atlanta News First newscast and our Atlanta News First app. They will be announcing the arrest made in the 2019 Baby India case. Now, as some of you might remember, taking you all the way back to June 2019, when Forsyth County deputies with the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office found a newborn abandoned in a plastic bag along a wooded strip of land near Dave's Creek Road. That's incoming. Now, that plastic bag had a newborn inside. That newborn, a baby India, of course, had been dumped on top of a pile of leaves and sticks. The, uh, that was a story that caught attention across Georgia, especially here in the metro Atlanta community. And today, just four years later, uh, right coming up right on the dot, four years, we are learning of a massive development in this investigation, an arrest that has been made. And we'll hopefully get some more details into who that individual was that was arrested and any anything that deputies, officials, investigators may have learned since the, that June 2019 discovery. Now we do have body cam footage of the event I'm going to show you here. I do want to warn for those of you, uh, this is uh, the full body camera footage that we obtained back in 2019. Shows the moments that deputies uh, did find the newborn, so do expect to see uh, some of that raw material now. And there it is, that is Baby India found in that plastic bag. You can see uh, in this body cam footage, uh, just earlier deputies had ripped open that bag to find the newborn inside. And this is essentially the response, holding that flashlight in his mouth, one of the responding officers just trying to uh, administer aid to this newborn child with an umbilical cord still attached. It's really tense moments, a uh, quick response from uh, these emergency crews from responding deputies who found the child in uh, this wooded area, again, along Dave's Creek Road in Cumming. That child had survived, that newborn is now four years old, coming up on four years old. Uh, we are expecting to hear moments from now from Forsyth County uh, officials that an arrest has been made and they will be giving us hopefully details into anything they have learned in this four years long case particularly what I think a lot of people are uh, waiting to hear is who was the person that was arrested? What is the connection, uh, if any, to this baby? Uh, a lot of unanswered questions still yet. So we will be taking you uh, back out to this live press conference where here in just under a minute, uh, we did get a two minute warning uh, at around 2.03. So really any moment now we will be hearing from officials uh, and getting you those latest details. Let's listen in. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ron Freeman. I'm the sheriff from Forsyth County. Um, obviously, we're here today because we've had a major breakthrough 
And what we've all known is a baby India case. Standing with me today are representatives from the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, uh, Chairman of Forsyth County Board of Commissioners, the FBI, as well as members of our major crimes unit and other units within the Sheriff's Office. You know, this has been a almost to the date four-year investigation. Four years ago, we stood in this very room behind this very podium, and we asked for your help because we wanted to know who could do something so incredulous to leave a baby tied up in a bag in the woods to die. And so thank you to the media because every one of you ran this story, and you ran it a lot. But unfortunately, those leads came in slow, and they didn't lead to a lot of stuff. But you guys tried, so thank you. If you remember, she was found on June 6, 2019, in southeast Forsyth County, just before a significant thunderstorm hit this county. Back then, I called it divine intervention, and I truly believe that still today. If you look at everything that had to happen for this little girl to survive, for alert people to hear a sound in the woods that they thought was a wild animal, but two teenage girls who couldn't let it go because they thought it sounded like a baby crying. To a dad they convinced to go out in the middle of the night to check on a weird sound in the middle of the woods to discover that, to the first responding deputy, Terry Roper, being a dad like he's supposed to be, showing an infant what they should have been shown, which is compassion and care and somebody who's going to take care of them when the person who was supposed to be doing that wouldn't do it. This investigation has literally taken thousands of hours, and we never stopped for those four years. Four years ago, I stood in this room, and I told you, we will bring this person to justice. Whoever was responsible for this, we would find them, and we would bring them to justice. I'll be honest with you, little did I know it was going to take four years. <clears throat> That massive investigation in those thousands of hours, we left no stone unturned. That this investigation has spanned from the Northeast to the Midwest, and we utilized every significant technological and investigative technique that we could find. Now, approximately 10 months ago, with advanced DNA investigative practices and familial DNA, the Sheriff's Office was able to identify the father of Baby India. That began an even more concerted investigation with a focus to determine the manner, cause, and who was responsible for leaving baby India to die in an isolated area of woods. We engaged, and I want to thank, personally th say thank you, to FBI Atlanta, to the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, because we asked for their help. The FBI provided countless help to us in surveillance over the last 10 months. The GBI Crime Lab provided valuable information for us, and they helped us with interviews yesterday. So I want to thank our partners because we don't work cases like this alone. Within the past week, the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office Major Crimes Unit were able to utilize, again, DNA. We're able to identify the birth parent of Baby India. Instrumental in the speed of that identification was Othram Labs. It's a DNA laboratory and we have their president, Dr. David Middleman, with us here today. I want to brag on him for a second. My major crimes detectives tell me when we identified the birth parent of Baby India, he himself was on the phone with our detectives after midnight that very night. So thank you for your help. Now to get to the real part of why we're here. Yesterday, Forsyth County Sheriff's Office executed multiple arrests and search warrants across Forsyth County. Nearly 40 deputies participated in the operation, and we conducted dozens of interviews, and those efforts are continuing today. Our goal was simple, identify who was responsible for trying to kill baby India. No less, no more. This investigation is not over. There's still work to be done. And it, again, as I said, it continues. I want to thank our district attorney, Penny Penn. 
She and her office were lockstep with us and with us yesterday as we worked on this investigation, and it's now their job to take this forward to a grand jury. I didn't have to motivate our team to do this. You know, every detective assigned to this case primarily happened to be a parent themselves. You don't have to work really hard with somebody tries to hurt a baby. You, it's, it's easy to be motivated. While it was certainly a team effort, I'm going to recognize three individuals. Detective Corporal Tim Connor, who's a case agent, Sergeant Tyler Sexton, and Detective Lieutenant Bill Franco. They ran one of the most complex and best investigations I've seen in my three decades in this work. Yesterday, the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office arrested Karima Jawani, 40 years old, a female of Cumming, Forsyth County, where she lives in southeast Forsyth County. DNA evidence confirms that Karima is the biological birth parent of Baby India. She cooperated with detectives during the investigation. She has been charged with criminal attempt to commit murder, cruelty to children in the first degree, aggravated assault, reckless abandonment, and other charges. How a parent, and I happen to be one too, can do such a callous thing is both incomprehensible to all of us and it's infuriating. I'm dumbfounded by any reasoning that could be there and how someone can have the ability to leave their own child to die. While we're not going to discuss motives or details of her interview, as this case is pending prosecution, and that is the most important thing to me, little can explain how this happened and no motive can justify that decision. You know, Georgia has a safe harbor law. Many of you have seen that. First 30 days, you can leave a child at a hospital, a police station, a fire station, a sheriff's office, and you can't get charged. In this case, Ms. Duwani made no effort to leave this child, not only under safe harbor law, but at any place this child could be found. This child was tied up in a plastic bag and thrown into the woods like a bag of trash. I can't understand that. I truly wish I could. I struggle. But I don't know how you can understand that. It literally is one of the saddest things I have ever seen. Yesterday, Deputy Sheriff Terry Roper, who discovered and rescued Baby India, was one of the arresting deputies of Karima Jawani. It seemed only fitting that deputy who first showed, as I said earlier, Baby India, what a parent and a human being should act like, how someone is supposed to protect and comfort an infant, got the privilege of arresting that person. Now, I took a little executive privilege because the handcuffs she wore to jail were mine. And the case detective, Tim Connors, is the one that put them on her. I told you four years ago we would find them and my cuffs would be on them, and they were. Evidence indicates that this birth likely took place inside of a motor vehicle. Detectives have developed information on this and are currently working on locating that vehicle and have leads on it. Additional evidence reveals that Karima Jawani drove alone for a significant period of time after the birth of baby India with the child in the car, and she made no effort to leave this child at any safe place where there was any remote possibility of her being located until she decided to tie the baby in a plastic bag and throw it into the woods to die. This is an incredible case with the strangest of circumstances from the beginning to the end. Evidence also reveals a history of hidden and concealed pregnancies and surprise births in Ms. Jawani's history. Additional evidence indicates that she had known of this particular pregnancy for a period of time, a fairly considerable period of time, and went to extremes to conceal this pregnancy. Interviews of family, friends, and medical professionals corroborate the history of these concealed pregnancies 
and for lack of better description, surprise bursts. While detectives, all of us, were surprised by the facts of this case, the evidence supports it. Simply and horribly, it is what it is. Trace evidence collected at the scene where baby India was abandoned also supports the likelihood that Karima Jawani was alone at the time of disposing of baby India. You know, despite this inconceivable criminal act, I think there's a good story to tell here. Baby India is now prospering. She's happy and healthy. When those who were supposed to do their best did their worst to her, Forsyth County stepped up in a big way. We had literally hundreds, if not thousands, we wish they were leads, but citizens calling in asking how they could help when she was first found. I'll foster her. I'll adopt her. My wife and I said we'd foster her. I had sheriffs and police chief calling me and tell me they would adopt her, wanting to make sure she was taken care of. You know, when a biological parent wouldn't do what they're supposed to do, Forsyth County surrounded this little girl with love, care, and prayers and lifted her up the way it's supposed to be. I was telling my team, I said, man, isn't it going to be cool to watch this little girl grow up and see her do some great things in spite of these beginnings. That's the jest, ladies and gentlemen. A biological parent, I have trouble with the word mother, who inexplicably, intentionally left her newborn infant to die. It's a case for prosecution. There's no justification but I'm really, really proud of the work that these men and women in this room and behind me put in because this case needed to be solved and this community needed to know what happened to baby India. With that, we'll be glad to take some questions. Please understand two kind of hit points here. We're not gonna discuss current status of baby India. She is happy and healthy in a safe place, but confidentiality is paramount in this case where it comes to her. So we're not going to discuss her. Uh, and there is some evidence because of the prosecution we're going to be hesitant to speak to at this point in the case. But other than that, uh, the detectives and, and people behind me and myself will be glad to take some questions. I'm yes, sir. We inquired about that and looked into that, and thus far, uh, while the statement I made was accurate, we have not found additional acts like this. We, we've not discovered any other criminal acts would probably be the best answer for that. Okay. Chair Peter Dukes, Fox 5 Atlanta. Could you just talk about this feeling that I can see on your faces and all those gathered here today, uh, having resolved this case and finally having a Deidre, I've been doing this for 33 years. And I truly can't think of one that I wanted more. You know, people get it. Look, if you're a parent, you, get, you really get it if you're a parent, right? This innocent baby girl who needed everything, right? They need everything from the time they're born. Got put in a bag and left as a bag of trash to die. And so, yeah, I, I'll be very blunt. Every one of us behind here have said we wanted this one. We wanted this resolved, and we wanted to find the person responsible. But we did that also as professional law enforcement officers because you didn't know the facts till you knew the facts. Unfortunately, the facts in this case reveal no mitigation, right, no explanation, just a really, really heinous act. So I think we're all pleased, but I thought I would be madder than I am. 
but I'm actually probably a little sadder because I can't understand it. I think we're better than that in humanity. Yes, sir. months that took so, I don't want to say it took so long, but the amount of time that it took to track the mom. Can you speak to that time frame? Without going into our investigative techniques, you know, not everybody has a DNA profile that's in some database somewhere, some accessible somehow. And once we identified the father, as you can imagine, we had an investigation that was this big. Once we, once we identified the father, that gave us a really focal point. But not knowing the facts of the case, not knowing who was responsible for this criminal act against Baby India, that began an intensive surveillance investigation, a lot of background investigation, a lot of additional information needed to be sought. And it wasn't until last week that the break of identifying the birth parent happened. So we were working it hot and heavy for the last 10 months but we needed one additional piece of information to make us feel that we had enough to go forward with criminal prosecution, and that was the DNA identification of the birth parent. And that birth parent, is she from Forsyth County? This, the birth parent is Karima Jawani, who's under arrest and sitting in my jail. Right, but is she from this area? She, she lives in southeast Forsyth County for the last couple of years. Franco, you want to? Sure. We'll let Lieutenant Franco. So, I mean, well, Lieutenant Franco, Major Crimes Unit. Uh, I mean, basically, we're we're looking for the links and we're putting the pieces together, and, and that took took us to several different places throughout the country, uh, and then eventually brought us back here to Forsyth County. No. Thank you. Sheriff Michelle Hall, Forsyth County News. Yes, ma'am. Did the are you allowed to say did the biological father know that there was even a baby? There is no evidence at this point that the father was aware of either the pregnancy or the abandonment of baby India. Uh, and we have looked thus far exclusively in, in depth at that. Uh, and that's why I mentioned earlier that there is a history of unknown or concealed pregnancies, uh, maybe both, uh, and that's still under investigation at this point, not the father per se, but the unknown and concealed pregnancies as we validate additional information. But we've corroborated that in multiple interviews yesterday, in multiple uh, statements made yesterday. Uh, and so at this point, we have zero reason to believe the father was aware of the pregnancy or of the birth and abandonment of baby India. One more question goes back to the Delano line, and I know you probably mentioned it a little, but did this young lady give any indication of why she did it? That goes to motive, um, and I will say that she cooperated, and there was, but at this point, due to the pending prosecution, we're not going to talk about motivations, I, and I hope you respect that, but, but we do have some information. But I will say this again, for God's sake, tell me any explanation on the, and I know that you're not asking, any explanation on the face of this earth that can justify doing that to a child. Because it don't exist. Deidre, you had? Uh, Sheriff, can you tell us uh, if the suspect had any children living with her at the time of her arrest? If she did, where those children are now? There are additional uh, children. Um, we have contacted our partners at the Department of Family and Children's Services and asked them to evaluate and, and put a safety plan in place. Uh, Ms. Juwani is being held without bond at the Forsyth County Jail. Uh, and so that becomes a defects issue uh, for them to evaluate the home or the, the current standing of those other children. Uh, but there, there were additional children, did you? And can you provide the number of children, ages, or age range? Um, I'm going to be very cautious of identifying children who are innocent and had nothing to do in this heinous criminal act. 
uh, but they range from school age to near adult, and I'll just leave it at that. Y'all are too easy. Someone who may be out there who maybe don't know, like, look, there are other options. Oh, one, thank you. Look, there, there's a thousand different ways. We talked about the safe harbor law and being able to drop off at those locations we talked about. And I'm sure, and, I, and I'm asking for you, you, our friends in the media, please push that out there, right? Because we might stop this from happening somewhere else. But for God's sake, don't. Don't leave a baby in such a position. And I want to make a very clear difference. There's one thing of abandoning a child. You've covered many cases. We've seen cases, been involved in cases where a baby's been abandoned, left on a doorstep, left at right a business, left in a parking lot, where it was clear that even though it might not have complied with the safe harbor law, someone had something in, in their mind that this child would likely be found. That is not this case. This child was wrapped up to suffocate in a plastic bag, thrown 20 yards in the woods in an isolated area with one house nearby it. That family happened to arrive home when they weren't supposed to and happened to go back outside because it was going to rain to empty their car when they had earlier decided they were going to do it the next morning. That's divine intervention. This baby's supposed to be here. So I want to make very clear the difference in someone who's struggling, someone who doesn't know what to do, someone who's, you know, in an emotional distress and abandons a child because they don't know what else to do, but took some effort at least to find some safety and care for that child versus somebody who tried to kill a child. They're not the same thing. Tom? Oh, no, I'm good. Oh, sorry. Appreciate it. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much. Thank you for your help again four years ago. And let's hope we never see each other for something like this again. All right. All right, and you just heard from Forsyth County officials detailing the 2019 case of Baby India, a newborn that was found abandoned in a wooded area and now new developments, an arrest has been made in this investigation. The biological mother of this child that you're looking at on your screen right here has been arrested. Now, we are putting out the latest details for you right now um, on our atlantanewsfirst.com and Atlanta News First news apps, but we also want to take you through some of what was said here in this press conference. Forsyth County officials uh, detailing wh what they described as a, a moment of divine intervention. That's what they said. Uh, they said how lucky this discovery was for them in 2019 for uh, an alert family to hear the sounds of a baby crying, what they thought was a baby crying from this area near Dave's Creek Road incoming, and for the two teenage girls in that family to ask their parents to urge that they go check on the sound, uh, leading to the moment that deputies would find baby India, then in an abandoned plastic bag, uh, again, along that wooded strip of land with not just not a lot of population surrounding um, that I, I do want to emphasize this child this this newborn is now a thriving four year old uh, again we we did obtain a mugshot of the mother i 'm going to try to pull that up here for you here shortly. But uh, an incredible case of survivorship we're talking about here, that this baby, now four years old, now, now in safe hands, uh, taking you back to 2019 when deputies did find uh, that abandoned child, now leading to an arrest of the baby's mother. Now, uh, in this press conference, they went into details of how uh, the mother investigators believe through advanced evidence that she had given birth she had drove a ways and then uh, uh, abandoned the child again essentially dumped the child in this wooded area uh, officials emphasizing hey if you are uh, ever in a place where you are not able to care for a child that there are programs and and shelters available to pursue adding that uh, in this 
this case, they described it as just something that was uh, unimaginable. And again, this development here, clearly a very uh, sensitive case for these Forsyth investigators, for these officials who had been uh, working on this for four years, along with several other agencies. You saw GBI present at this press conference. You, you saw them detail uh, the manpower it took to, to track down the mother to identify the father uh, and leading to the moment that they're now able to say that they arrested and charged uh, baby India's biological mother in connection to that 2019 incident. Now we are going to be keeping you up to date in about 30 minutes. We have our Atlanta News First newscast starting at three. Make sure you stay with us. We'll be bringing you the latest developments and any other details that we learn. As, and you can count on us to continue to keep you up to date as this is very much a developing story. For now, at the First Alert Desk, I'm Maria Moreau.